Who would think in 1940, 41, gas chambers? Who ever heard of that? Nobody knew. Evelyn Pike Rubin was eight years old in November 1938. She was living in Nazi Germany then when her father was arrested on Kristallnacht and brought to an internment camp. It didn't matter that her dad, who was named Benno, was a decorated German army veteran. The certificate that went with the medal that my father got in the First World War, that was him. Kristallnacht is also called the Night of Broken Glass, the night anti-Semitic fervor in Nazi Germany boiled over and sparked a rash of violence. Windows of Jewish homes and businesses were shattered. Widespread looting ensued. Fires lit. Life for Evelyn had changed overnight. My father was released three weeks later, as almost everybody at that time was released from these camps, told, you have two months in which to leave the country. So my parents tried to find countries that would let us in. They tried to go to Brazil, they tried to go to Cuba, uh, they tried to go to Argentina, they tried to go to Palestine. But they couldn't get papers to go anywhere except for one place they heard of through word of mouth, Shanghai, China. Yes, you had radio, you had newspapers, you know, but you know stuff about China. But to go and live there, people weren't just about to do it. They were scared. Uh, I, I, it was a terrible situation to go or not to go. Will it save our lives? Will it not save our lives? What kind of a country are we going to? What kind of life? 8,000 miles away. But yet people were considering it because things were getting worse. So on February 13th, 1939, Evelyn and her parents boarded a cruise ship called the Hakuzaki Maru and soon arrived in Japanese-occupied Shanghai. We were kind of scattered. Some went to the French concession, a lot of them went to an area called Hongqiu, which was like a slum area, but very cheap. Her parents sold some valuables and started a typewriter business in China. Evelyn's grandmother joined them there a year later. Her family was among an estimated 20,000 European Jews who sought refuge in Shanghai during the war. They joined Iraqi Jews and Russian Jews who had previously settled in the city. As World War II raged on, life in Japanese occupied Shanghai became harder for the Jewish people. Then came uh, restrictions by the Japanese because the Nazis wanted them to kill us and they refused and their uh, compromise was to put us into a ghetto area and there wasn't enough food and there wasn't enough money to buy food. But they were still alive. Evelyn believes her father's arrest on Kristallnacht was a blessing in disguise because it forced her family out of Germany while they could still leave. Millions of others were not as fortunate. Oh, I feel very, very lucky. Uh, all of us who were in Shanghai, we didn't realize how lucky we were till after the war and we found out what happened to our families and what had happened in Europe. Although life in Shanghai was far from easy, it allowed Evelyn's family to avoid the extermination camps that millions of others could not. In 1993, Evelyn published this autobiography called Ghetto Shanghai. It's already on its third edition. Very important that the story be told. I'm alive today because of the Japanese. Evelyn has shared her story with thousands of people over the years and created this board in her home covered with photos and precious documents. That's the pass that the Japanese gave us to leave the ghetto. Her mind and memories are still sharp and she works hard to keep the stories alive. She turns 87 this year and knows that time is of the essence. In 10 years there won't be any survivors around because uh, we'll all be dead. Evelyn and her mother left Shanghai in 1947 and came straight to New York. She raised a family here. Today, Evelyn has four children, 12 grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. In 1993, Evelyn returned to her childhood home in Shanghai. She even reconnected with one of her Chinese neighbors. Evelyn feels blessed that she's been able to tell her unique story of survival, and she'll continue to do so to anyone who will listen.